When you think of laptop, you most likely have something like this in mind. But find out that the first laptops weighed dozens of kilograms and were not really portable. Let's find the history of laptops and how they evolved over time. The foundations of the evolution of portable computers were laid in 1975 when IBM launched the first portable computer, the IBM 5100. You couldn't hold it in your lap because it was very heavy, weighing 25 kilograms. However, it was portable and came with a 5-inch screen and 1.9 MHz processor and used a magnetic tape cartridge for data storage. But in 1981, Osborne 1 was launched, considered by many to be the first truly portable laptop. It weighed 11 kilograms and could be closed and transported like a suitcase. The Osborne 1 had a 5-inch screen and was the first computer to have two built-in floppy disk drives and was powered by 4 MHz processor and 64 KB of RAM. The Osborne 1 was a real success, both from the point of view of portability and the rather low price, only $6,000 in today's price. Immediately, the Grid Compass was launched, which by its design set a standard for modern laptops. The Grid Compass 1101 was the first clamshell laptop, and due to its small size, it was used by NASA in their space shuttle program at the time. The laptop was equipped with an Intel 8086 processor and had a 320 by 240 pixel display, all in a package that weighed 5 kilograms. Epson launched in 1982 the first portable computer with a built-in printer which was small enough to fit in a briefcase. The Epson HX20 featured a 68 keyboard, rechargeable batteries, a very small LCD screen, 120 by 32 pixels, and 16 kilobytes of RAM, all for the price of just $759, about $2,300 today. Built in 1985, the first device with a modern form factor for a laptop was launched. The Aluminium K-Pro 2000 came with a removable keyboard, LCD screen, and lead-acid battery, all for $1,995, about $5,600 today. In 1986, IBM launched a convertible PC with a rather intriguing design and shape. It had a removable 640 by 200 LCD screen, a 3.5-inch floppy drive, and weighed about 6 kilograms. The laptop cost about $5,600 in today's money. But it was not all a success, as a new laptop came on the market that promised to offer twice the computing power of the IBM laptop for less money. This is the Toshiba T1100. It had more RAM, a 640x200 pixel monochrome LCD display, and was powered by the 7.16 MHz Intel 80C86 processor. In 1987, Hewlett-Packard distinguished itself with the Vectra Portable CS, the first laptop with a 3-inch floppy drive capable of using 1.44 MB floppy disks. However, this was not enough, and the Vectra Portable was not successful, both because of its large size and its high price. In 1989, Apple entered the laptop market with the Macintosh Portable, Apple's first battery-powered computer. It had a 9.8-inch black and white screen, a 40 MB hard drive, track bowl, and weighed 7.2 kilograms. Moreover, this is considered the worst Apple product ever made. If the computer's battery failed, it could no longer work, and the small storage space, an off-white color and high price led to the failure of the Macintosh Portable. Apple learned from its mistakes and introduced the PowerBook series in 1991, which initiated the form factor standards for laptops. Class closure, screen over the keyboard, larger screens, support for hands and trackpad. The following year, IBM launched the ThinkPad 700C, considered an important milestone in the evolution of laptops, being the best-known, best-selling and most appreciated IBM laptop. The ThinkPad came with a 10.4-inch color LCD display, was powered by the Intel 486SLC 25MHz processor, had 4 MB of RAM, and had an 80 or 120 MB hard drive. The laptop weighed only 2.6 kilograms and was sold starting at $2,375 US dollars, which is $5,000 in today's money. Apple's PowerBook series initially featured optional displays on the PowerBook 165C model, and with the 1994 500 series, Apple introduced the first true touchpad, the first 16-bit stereo audio, and the first built-in Ethernet network adapter. The price for such a model was about $2,270, which is around $4,600 today. Also in 1944, IBM introduced the first laptop with an integrated CD-ROM drive, the ThinkPad 775CD model. 
Now that the form factor of the laptop has been established, the big manufacturers are trying to innovate on the design and side size. Apple stood out with the iBook series in 1999, which came out with an unusual design inspired by the iMac design of the time. However, the iBook stood out by introducing Wi-Fi connectivity, being the first with such a feature. Faster than we expected, in 2002, the first gaming laptop was launched, the Alienware Area 51M model. It wasn't cheap at all, but for $3,000, the laptop offered top specs at the time. A 3.06 GHz Pentium 4 processor, 1 GB of 266 MHz memory, 40 GB of storage, and a 2048 by 1536 UXGA screen. Also in the 2000s, Dell was the leader in the laptop market, being very popular and cool for a long time. It was also then that Toshiba launched the world's thinnest laptop, the Toshiba Portage 2000. It had a front edge only of 1.49 cm high, extending slightly to 1.91 cm at the back. During this whole period, we try to make the laptops as small, thin and performant at the same time. But the one that stood out was Apple with the MacBook Air from 2008. This was the thinnest laptop in the world, measuring just 0.4 cm at its thinnest point and 1.9 cm at its thickest point. And at the same time, it was the first laptop without an integrated optical drive. In 2012, Microsoft launched the Microsoft Surface, being the first to successfully combine tablet and laptop. However, this type of device were not very successful, many considering that the two devices should remain separate. If at the beginning of the 80s there was only the idea of a portable computer, so that later we had what we call now laptops, today we have a choice of many categories of laptops depending on everyone's need and budget. Whether you want a laptop thin, with high autonomy, thin frames, powerful or convertible hardware.